Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Death Row History Channel. I am your host, Mr. Toad. And today's video is finishing up the New York Death Commission. I know in a previous video I said that I had finished that series, but I went back and rewatched my videos and realized I left out a major part of the story. We have the method. We have the reason why the method was invented. We have the history behind it. You can go back and watch parts 1, 2, 3, and 4 to figure that out. But in this video, it's all about the final guinea pig. And yes, that is ultimately what I will refer to the subject in today's video as. Why, you may ask? Because when you don't have the procedure for said... When you don't have a procedure for execution, when you're testing something out, then the subject of the test would be the final guinea pig. And that person would be a illiterate vegetable peddler from Buffalo, New York, by the name of one William Kemmler. Uh, Kemmler was an alcoholic, and in a alcohol-fueled rage, he hacked his live-in wife, fiancé, girlfriend, whatever she was, with a hatchet. He then went to a bar and said, I killed her and I will gladly hang for it. Now, because he was illiterate, he didn't realize that the state of New York had outlawed hanging and legalized the electric chair. Uh, yeah. So, he goes to trial. He gets convicted. As he's sitting on death row... A lot of powerful people came out in support of him, trying to get him exonerated. Uh, the most notable of which being George Westinghouse, who paid for attorneys for William Kemmler. To no avail. Um, in To no avail. They would... The, on May 21st, 1890, the Supreme Court would uphold the legalities of death by electrocution, setting his date for August the 6th, 1890, at 6 a.m. So, on the day of the execution, Kimmler, like many other people after him, would be walked into the execution chamber wearing a suit, uh, strapped into the chair, and the interesting thing is there were 25 witnesses in the room, 14 of which were doctors. They had 14 doctors on hand to evaluate the electrocution process. So you had 14 doctors there just to show how humane this method was. Yeah. So, after, and they introduced him to the witnesses, to each witness, and then strapped him in. Okay. So, the generator, I've read reports where it said 1,500 to 1,800 volts, uh, the generator was a 2,000 volt generator, or 2,000 watt generator, so therefore, the amount of electricity going through his body was 2,000 volts, or 2,000 watts, either one. Um, so, they use the same amount today. In 2019, with Edmund Zagorski and prior, 2,000. 2,500, depending on the state, but generally 2,000. Okay, now, 
we get to the uh, nuts and bolts of it. Now that we've got who Kimmler is, we can get to why this is historically significant. Um, again, they didn't know what to do, so they threw the switch for 17 seconds. Thinking, okay, that'll work, that'll work. And Kemler's body went red, and he started convulsing. After 17 seconds, the current was stopped to the horror of all those present, those 25 people. Um, he wasn't dead. Like, someone in the crowd screamed, Great God, he's alive. At which point, they threw the switch again. And... They left it going for 30 seconds. So now you've got a man who's been in the electric chair for 47 seconds. At 2,000 volts. Uh, the second time... Oh no, this time it was over a minute, so... They actually electrocuted him the second time for over a minute. Um, overkill if you ask me, but hey, it is what it is. They wanted to make sure he was dead. Um, witnesses at some point started smelling smoke and burning flesh. The smoke filled the room. They started smelling burning flesh and there was a crackling sound. Don't know what that could be. Maybe it's the ligaments in his body. Maybe it's not. Who knows? But when he appeared dead, they turned it off. Uh, now, the thing is that the skin, his skin was charred black. And... Charring in electrocutions is not uncommon, you know, it is what it is, you know, it's electricity, it happens. What makes this different is they had let him sit in the electric chair being electrocuted for so long that his meat had started to carbonize. The, the meat on his legs carbonized. Now, carbonization is the process of burning. So, when you let leave meat in the oven for too long and it burns, that layer of burnt ash or whatever the whatever you call it, that, that, that top layer of burnt matter is carbonization. They said that the, that his, the meat on his legs was the, the meat on his legs was like shoe leather. So they had literally cooked this man in the electric chair. I, I, I can't, they, in history, they've always said this was a botched execution, but I don't consider it botched because there was no protocol, there was no procedure. They had tested it on animals, but he was the first human guinea pig for this method, so I don't consider it, me personally, I don't consider it botched, but... Technically, it was. Or that's how they see it now. Um, but it was successful. And at one point, New York would run two electric chairs. One at Auburn, where Mr. Kimlo was executed. One at Sing Sing. And eventually, by 1920, the one in Auburn had been retired. And the one at Sing Sing was running full capacity. Uh... I will be doing other videos later on 
different connections that the cultural connection that the the electric chair had because there's a lot of interesting stories coming out of New York in when they were rocking and rolling with the electric chair um even leading to the threat of the electric chair stopping the assassination of a prominent politician by the mafia I will get into that in a later video but yes it's the the electric chair would catch on like wildfire you know um you would have New York New Jersey Maryland Pennsylvania Ohio being some of the first states to adopt it. Um, then it would go into the South, where every southern state except Mississippi would use it at some point or another. I think Mississippi used it for a short period, but Mississippi is more famously known for using the gas chamber. So, um... My state of Oklahoma holds the distinction of the first electrocution west of the Mississippi in 1915, which really isn't a good distinction, but mm, it is what it is. But yes, folks, that's all I have for you today. This has been Mr. Toad with the Death Row History Channel. Saying I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, comment down below. Let me know. If you have any suggestions for videos, comment down below. Interact with me. I don't bite. I like talking to people. Um, but this is Mr. Toad saying I'm gone.